Good afternoon. Uh, sorry you're not all here in the media room, uh, but uh, uh, I'd be happy to, I, I don't really have, how can you have an opening statement for Duke Carolina? Duke Carolina is the opening statement. And uh, so I'd be, I'd love to answer any of the questions that you have. All right, if you have a question for Coach, use the hand raise feature and uh, we'll get started here first with Steve Wiseman. Steve, go ahead. You're on, I can't, uh, maybe I'm not hearing it. Is that better? There yeah, go. I got it. Okay, I had to hit the right button, that's my bad. A um, couple of days since the Miami game and have you seen what you wanted from the team? Is there a response to what happened? I know it's still a couple of days away from the game yet, but from, from the Carolina game, but uh, what have you seen so far? Yeah, I don't think there, I think you have a, there's a continuum uh, for a response. It's not just in one day. And, uh, and with our, with our team, even, you know, wins and losses, it's, you know, we got to continue to learn about one another, about why you win, why you lose, you know, uh, and you have to look at every experience and, and let them know. I didn't realize it, uh, and until this week, someone told me we're the fifth youngest team in the NCAA. And, uh, big, and that's not an excuse. It's, it's like what it is, is you have to coach that team differently. And I got to keep looking at maybe not going how I coached some other teams might not work with this team. It's, it, it, you know, like, how do I, how do I keep getting a, a consistently positive, productive message to my, to my group? And, uh, and it, it, it's different. That doesn't mean they're bad or anything. It's just different. And I, uh, and because I've been doing it so long, you, you know, you, you know, going to work, you usually turn left at this light, maybe you should turn right <laughs> or just always pay attention to the light, I, sh I should say, but uh, that, that's what we're going, we're going through. There's not one answer, Steve, to the, it's, uh, and just, we're just kind of continuing to work at it. Aaron Beard, go ahead. Hey Mike, <clears throat> hey Mike. Uh, you sort of touched on what I wanted to ask you about about your approach because you made such a point about getting your message across. Right. Uh, I would imagine you do that. There's a di you don't coach every team the same anyway. But no. is there a difference in how you're having to sort of really rethink maybe your approach to getting them to consistently do what you want? Yeah, and it has nothing to do with attitude. It has to do with absorption of the message or an understanding of the message, and. Uh, you're, you know, I do a lot of public speaking at, you know, for the Washington Speakers Bureau for about 30 years now. And a big thing is understanding who you're talking to, you know, and what, what situation are they in. Um, you're, you know, when you have a younger group, they're in the process of becoming more than an older group. And so they change, they can change more during a season in how you, how you try to get the message. So, you know, people, you know, you know whether when they're evaluating a team and say, well, they lost, you should kill them and you should do this and do all those things. Maybe not, you know, they, they won, you should do that. In other words, you, you, you can go into what you, the habits of what you've always done. And what you've always done doesn't always work with every, everybody. So I, I can't uh, constantly uh, evaluate me dur during this time. And obviously some of it is what decisions you make during the game or why did you make that, but also in how you're bringing a team along, you know, and I, you know, with Steve's question uh, is a good one. And it, it's not just evaluating them, it's evaluating me. You know, how am I, how am I working with them? Am I, you know, I, and this year it's even more difficult because of the environment, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, like yesterday, uh, we had a meeting in practice the day before on Tuesday, I got my second shot. Okay. And 
so after the first one, I had one day where I was really knocked back, uh, unbelievably. And uh, yesterday in the morning for about six, seven hours, I got knocked back. And so I conducted my practice not in the same way that I was, that I am now. <laughs> and I'm, I feel really good now. I hope that was the reaction that I'm through. And some people say the second one gives you a worse reaction. So there's a, that part of it is, it, it, you know, like, did I say the right things? Was I in the right mood? Did I, you know, did I express it the way I wanted to express? So last night I'd spent a lot of time just thinking about, did I get that across? And before practice, you know, we're going to have practice here in a, a little bit. I want to go through some things with the team to make sure they understood what I was was trying to put across yesterday. So, yeah, there's more of that going on this year for two reasons, at least two reasons. One is the nature of this year. And two is the the, the youth of our team, the lack of experience. And we're constantly working on that. Uh, Brendan Marks, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Yeah, I, I just wanted to follow up on that. How much do you enjoy that process of sort of evolving your message and, and trying to come up with new ways with each new team to get through to them the best? Well, I, when I look back on a season, I've, I seem to have enjoyed it more than when you're actually going through it. <laughs> uh, but uh no, that's part, that's my duty. It's not my job, it's my duty to uh, to do that. And when you get your message, look, whenever you get your message across, you feel good about it. If you're not getting your message across, if you're not, you know, it, it's just not going the way you, you want it to. It's very frustrating. And uh, you got to be careful that you don't react to your frustration. You rather react to how to get your message across. And I would say that at times I react more, not more, but at times I react to the frustration. And uh, I got to be careful about that with this group more than coaching Shire and Smith when they were in 2010. You didn't have to worry about, you could just, do anything and they would respond uh, to it. Evan Cole, go ahead. Hi coach. So obviously, you know, you've already gone through more than half a season with no fans in the stands. Um, you know, so you've more than gotten used to that, but it, even already going through more than half a year, it's still going to be weird playing the Carolina game, especially at Cameron with, you know, no Cameron crazies, no camaraderie on campus prior to the game. You know, there's been no tents obviously in Cavill and, you know, is it still going to be weird even though, You've already seen the impact no fans has. Yeah, and and it's a good point. And but uh, I'm not sure we ever will get used to it. You know, because uh, it, it's so different. It, it's so different. And again, it's that way for everybody. But uh, no, it's going to be weird. One of the, I think you know, I've coached in over 90 Duke North Carolina games. And the ones in Cameron, what a, how lucky have I been to be able to walk out of my locker room and you come in and boom, the buzz, if, you know, the energy, you know, the, that you get from a crowd like that and is, is amazing. And what has to happen is we have to get a certain, level of energy without that. And that's another goal that you have uh, uh, as a leader, in, you know, during, the, during this time is to get that energy up. It'll never be as, as up as it is with that crowd. It's impossible. It, it, it's, it's impossible. Uh, David Thompson, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I'm just curious, like you said, you, you've coached in 90 of these games. Um, I, I don't know the exact number. I know well, it's well, a lot, a lot, plenty. Um, do you Some have, of them I wish that I didn't, and my fans <laughs> that I coach on them. But. Sure, absolutely. 
do you do you have though a couple moments in this rivalry that that really stick out in your head when when you think about you know all your time? Uh, not like I, when you're asking me, I, I I try to think of them, but they, you know, it's it's really the craving of the next moment that you're thinking about more so than what happened. I do know like their um, Duke basketball uh, our meet our social media they put out something this week about Nolan, Nolan's senior year. So I got to see that moment, you know, where we came back and he had uh, his best game ever in Cameron. Uh, but, you know, individual stuff like, like that, where a kid hits a shot or we make a stop, uh, some unusual play, uh, uh, a stop at the end of a game where Wojo slapping the floor and, and we, you know, we got the stop, but it's not necessarily a shot. It's, it's like one play. And so they're defensive and offensive plays that you, when you start thinking about it, say, well, that was, wow. It was nice to be in that moment. Thanks coach. And Josh Graham, go ahead. I don't know if you've exactly played 90 Carolina games, but I found this stat to be pretty interesting. Excluding the Gaudette games, you've faced Dean Smith 38 times, which is the exact same number you've now faced against Roy Williams. So I'm just interested in what ways have you found facing a Carolina, uh, a Roy Carolina team different than facing a Dean Carolina team? They've been incredibly, outstandingly consistent. <laughs> They are uh, uh, yeah, their program has been incredibly consistent of uh, with excellence. And so, yeah, that no, it one, the opportunity to have coached uh, a, to have a game with Roy and it being part of the history of our program and of basketball and with Dean. You know, Roy and I have actually talked about how lucky we are, you know, to be in that moment. You know, at the towards the end of Dean's career, and then after he retired, um, we actually became really good friends. And I was old enough towards the end of his career to realize the moment I was in with him. And he always knew it. And, and then with Roy, we both knew it right from the, from the beginning. And uh, so it's been an honor to, uh, very lucky, very, very lucky. That's, because uh, those end up being really uh, unbelievable games. Uh, Jim Sumner, go ahead. Well, hey, Mike, another chronic question. One thing they always do well is rebound, and this year's team is no extension. You've had 40 years to learn how to counter that rebounding dominance. I mean, how big of a concern is that? How, how do you counter that? Well, at times we've countered it with Zion or uh, Leitner, or, you know, those guys. You have to figure out how to counter it with this team. And that's an advantage that they have over us. They're, they're bigger and more experienced than that uh, there. And uh, it, it, you just got to work at it. Hopefully you can hold your own against them. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's that and how fast they get the ball down the court are two staples of their program. And they were with Dean and they have been with Roy. When you think of Carolina basketball, you think of the fast break, and you also think of the offensive rebound. Excellent. Let's go ahead, sir. All right, you might be muted. We'll move on. Casey Hans, go ahead. I can't hear you. Casey, you're also muted. 
There we go. Hi, Casey Hintz from WREL. Going back to you just talking about, um, you know, feeling so lucky uh, about having the type of fans that you guys have that obviously, you know, on the outside, um, you know, the, the tents and all the students and whatnot. Just I want to know, you know, what does that meant to you to see that grow over the years of the last 30 some years? And how disappointing is it, um, you know, that your, your guys don't get to experience that fanfare this year? Well, it's very disappointing. And it's been a huge part of not just uh, um, basketball. It's part of Duke, you know, uh, you know, since tenning started, it's been like a, a passage, so to speak, where a great percentage of the students that attend Duke have tented. And, and it's like they, uh, they've made their commitment for life, you know, by, by, by tenning. And so not to have that, I think it, our guys, because we have so many freshmen, they don't know what it's like to come to practice every day and have 12 to 1500 kids in tents <laughs> waiting to see him play. But, uh, you know, it, I, I miss it more for our school, you know, and I, uh, it'll be good when we ever, we can, if we can get back to that in the future, because it's, uh, it's our little Woodstock, so to speak. Uh, it's, it, it's, it, it's really important and nobody else has that. They, they know, and when you have something that no one else has, and it's been built over decades, that's tradition. There, what do you get from that? You get a, you get a lot from that, and you probably get even a bigger commitment from those kids to the school as a result of that, and more, maybe even more so than being in Cameron. Uh, it's a lot easier being in Cameron than it is in a tent for six weeks. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike Topher, you're up. Good afternoon, Coach. Um, obviously, both Duke and Carolina have extremely talented, albeit young guards. And looking for the matchup this weekend, have you been able to keep an eye out on uh, Caleb Love, R.J. Davis, some of the guys Carolina has, and what kind of challenges do they present for, for your guards? Yeah, well, we watched both those young men a lot in high school. They come from great, really great high school programs. Uh, Jason Tatum's dad, uh, Coach Caleb, and uh, and both of them from great schools, and so uh, they're outstanding players. They, yeah, you know, they've developed really well, and they have those veteran bigs to play with. And uh, kind of an unsung guy for them is Leaky Black, who, you know, on the perimeter you have a veteran who has been in big games and has been successful. So, uh, you know, look, it's a learning experience for every freshman to be able to learn from your coaching staff and from veteran players helps. And you can see that development happening for those two, uh, those two young men. All right, we have time for a couple more. We'll go to Brendan Marks first. Hey, Coach. Yeah, just in a historical context, more so than this particular matchup, but <laughs> we got to ask Coach Williams earlier, what, what makes sort of the best UNC Duke game? Is it the individual players and their performances, or is it the stakes, or is it the moments, you know, what we were talking about earlier? To you, what, what is it that sort of sets specific games out from the rest of the pack? Obviously, they're all great, but um, some rise above the rest. Yeah, well, I think just for college basketball, Actually, it's always the players. It's always the players and what a, what players do in that moment. Uh, in that, with all the excitement and the stakes, there's for for the most part, both programs are, are going to play in the tournament and have a chance to be play for a national championship or compete. So it's not an end all no matter what, it's not an end all. And so, although everyone wants each one to be that moment in time. And, but so my, my thing is the players, you know, we, you know, the, uh, they, on both sides, they've, they've done extraordinary things in these games. And uh, some, most of the time, more than one have done it. And uh, that's what makes it such a showcase game. And 
Uh, and yeah, I, th I think both teams will play play so hard on Saturday night, and we'll we'll see some of that. You know, hopefully we see it a little bit more from our Duke guys than them, but uh, uh, it's the players. All right, two more questions. Go to Evan Cullen first. So the first Carolina game usually really marks the stretch of ACC play. Um, I'm just wondering, you had a couple of those postponements early in the year. So, yeah, I was just wondering if uh, you've looked into trying to find the space to uh, reschedule some of those games that, you know, you and your team missed. Um, yeah. yeah, right now, there, there's not the space unless what I see happening with other postponements, a game that was postponed for another team at another time has been able to be put in for a game that's postponed now. I'm not, I'm not sure that any, yeah, any team's going to be able to make up everything. Uh, uh, there was talk, this is way before the season, of, of uh, not way before, but before the season, uh, is that something you do instead of the tournament during that last week, during that week? You know, do you make up for games during that time? And my feeling is that, you know, we sh if, if it's safe, we should have, you know, the ACC tournament is such an important thing that, uh, you know, we, I would want that more than making up a game uh, during, during that time because uh, uh, of, of how important it is for our conference than a, than a singular game. Last question, I'm going to Mark Armstrong. Uh, this is the first week, Mike, in my time here anyway, that I've seen fans on both sides say they completely forgot the game was this weekend. Like it, it seems diminished for a variety of reasons, I'm sure. But does it ever feel that way on the inside or does every week leading up to this game feel the same to you? Well, you know, you, I think you bring up a point where a lot of things are diminished, right, throughout our country. So the fact that somebody says, well, they're worried about getting a vaccine or somebody's sick or is their kid in school? Do I have a job? Do I have enough food to eat? Or, I mean, there are enough things going on that are more important than this game. However, the game is really important and hopefully it will provide uh, a sense of in, in enjoyment and relief or release for the people watching it. All I know is that if you're a Duke or Carolina fan, when the game's being played, it'll be really important. It may not be important today, but at six o'clock on Saturday, it'll be very important. <laughs> and, and then the outcome will be very important to the the fan base that wins because they can do all their stuff <laughs> when, when they win and, or when we win. And so, uh, but it, it, you know, a lot of things are, your point about diminish is such a far reaching point. And, and, uh, but uh, our preparation is not diminished. Let's put it that way. All right, Coach, really appreciate your All time. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, Coach. Thank Thanks. you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, Mike.